month. So that's one perk of working in Seoul. And this is my area. So I live in Dongjak, which is kind of an older um, residential area of Seoul. Um, older population, kind of more quiet neighborhood, which I really enjoy. And it's cheaper to live here, so that's a plus. So it takes me about um, seven to eight minutes to walk to work every day. I walk to work. Uh, my apartment is close enough to my school that I don't have to take the train, which is nice. Um, but if I did have to take the train, Seoul public transit system is amazing. So while on my way to work, I guess I can talk a little bit more about um, my working hours and what I do. So I work a regular full 40 hour a week. Week. Um, I work 11 to 7, so 9 hours a day. So um, a little bit more about Seoul. Um, Seoul is one of the most modern countries in the entire world. If you move here, you can bet that you'll be able to find anything here that you can find in your home, uh, your home country. So um, it's not like moving to like a more remote country where you kind of have to adapt. It's a little bit more of a convenience country for sure. Um, speaking of convenience, uh, at any given time on any street in Korea, there will be two things, a cafe and a convenience store, a pyeonijum, which is a convenience store and they are everywhere. Not even joking, when I say they're everywhere, I mean they're everywhere. Uh, my commute is about an eight minute walk and on my way I pass nine convenience stores. Uh, here's one of the GS25, right there. That's the last one before work. So this is my school. I am now at work. Um, I'll be updating you guys about like how the school systems here work and what it's like working here. Uh, we mainly primarily teach young kids. Here's a few of them. And I'll be updating you guys as I go. Oh, it's really hot right now. Uh, it gets really, really hot in Korea in the summer. Uh, so prepare for that if you decide to come here. It gets to be like 100 degrees with 80%, 90% humidity. Easy. But I'm headed up now. Huh? <laughs> oh, Luz, what? Don't do that. No, don't touch it. No, don't touch. This is Joshua, teacher. Say hello. 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 He works here. Hello. Everybody else wants to say hi too. Hi, 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 hi. Okay, I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> so I had to put my hair up because it's so hot. But uh, I thought I'd show you guys uh, my classroom for my kids and talk a little bit about them while they're in PE because they're in PE right now. So I don't have to do anything. So this is my classroom for my kids. My kids are the youngest in the school. I have the youngest class. They are five years old Korean age, which means they are three years old everywhere else. Three years old. So this is my classroom for my kids. My kids are the youngest in the school. I have the youngest class. They are five years old Korean age, which means they are three years old everywhere else. Three years old. Here's some of our projects that we've done. Um, pictures of them and their families. These are all my kids with their families, their parents. Um, one of the nice things about teaching in Korea is that technology is really big here, so we have projectors. It's great. So I'm headed up to the third floor right now. Um, my school is three floors. We have our first floor, which is where the teacher's lounge is that I showed you. Second floor is where um, pre-K pre and kindy are mainly. That's where I teach mainly. And third floor, and third floor is where we teach our elementary school, so um, we do teach some elementary on the second floor. I'm mainly a pre-K kindergarten teacher. I mainly teach my three-year-olds, but in the afternoon I do teach elementary school kids who come from elementary school. 
Um, the way that the school system tends to work in Korea is that there's public schools where English teachers teach at and there's private schools called hagwons. Uh, I teach at a hagwon and I will put up like a little bit of info about the differences between there's big differences. So. One of the biggest main differences is that um, hagwons, unless it's like the kindergarten like I teach, they're there all day. But um, hagwons, after, uh, like they're mainly after school. So kids come from their regular school after school here. It leads to a lot of the kids, uh, a lot of them are quite young, a lot of them are like 9 to 10 years old, and so they're uh, very tired when they get to us because they've been in school all day and then they have to come to like 3 or 4 other classes after school, so they're pretty tired. But that's just the like culture of Korea, Korean culture kind of dictates that kids like study really hard when they're um, from the age when they're really young, um, so we try and like make it as fun and entertaining for them as possible. I wanted to show you guys the rooftop of my school. It's really neat. Um, you can get a really cool lay of the land. Uh, some scenery. The walls are really high, obviously, because we have kids here. So, But it's a really... I really like coming up here sometimes on my lunch breaks just to kind of unwind. It's like a beautiful, very stereotypical view of a very popular, um, densely populated Asian city. Uh, I really love it. So I'm going to head down and teach some classes now. I gotta teach my pre-K, my three-year-olds. Um, I can't take video of the class, but I can tell you guys a little bit about it, and I will see you on my lunch. Bye-bye. Mary. Hey. So this is uh, where we have lunch. We eat lunch upstairs. Hello. This is <laughs> Sorry, cat. Um, we get, I get free lunch because I'm a kindy teacher. The afternoon teachers don't, but. Yeah, it's like 60,000. to go get coffee. It's like a two minute walk from the school, one minute walk from the school. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Elaine T. Here's the point, you can't. Look. No, the inside of my thigh just really aches, so I just stretch it out. <laughs> just aches. We, we are very professional here. <laughs> Extremely professional here. Hey, hello! James, how old are you? I'm nine years old. You're nine years old? Alice, how old are you? I'm nine years old. Leo? I'm nine years old. Why are you talking like that? Alright, so it is 7 o'clock. I am off, off work. I have finished my classes. It is time for me to go home and answer all of your questions. So if you have any more questions, please send them along and I'll do my best. Alright, so I am on my way home now. It is about 7 o'clock. Again, my hours, my working hours are 11 to 7. Um, some teachers work earlier, some teachers work later. Um, but we all work regular 40-hour work weeks. So one of the biggest things about Korean work life versus like um, a developing country or like European countries is that Koreans will expect you to work like a full-time job. Some teachers in other countries like have like two classes and then are off for the rest of the day. But that's not the case here. Um, the case here is very much um, in line with like Korean culture in general and Korean culture in general is a very much uh, work hard, play hard country. Like you work really hard during the week so you can have a lot of fun on the weekend. So that's what we do. So people ask me, um, should I work in Korea? And I always ask them, what do you expect to like have your working days be like? Do you expect to like be working 40 hours a week if you want to only work a few hours a day? Then no, Korea is not for you. However, the upside to that is that you do get paid a lot more than you know teachers in most other countries so unless you're like in the UAE or something but uh, get paid quite a bit here enough to like live off of and save so this is the lead up to my apartment there's my convenience store conveniently located right across from my building which is right here the brick and I'll be home in just a second 
I decided to take a small detour to show you what a Korean Pyeonghi Jom or convenience store is like and this one's really small but the owner here, the one who owns it is really nice. He uh, talks to me a lot and this soju is this bottle of soju. Soju is like the national drink of Korea and uh, as you can see this full bottle of soju which is enough to get you at least tipsy if not drunk is 1500 won which is about a dollar fifty so crazy. You can get like tons of American brands like there's Sprite, Minute Maid, um, and Korean brands so Tropicana and then there's also Korean brands you can find almost anything here. Um, so I'm home now. I'm laying on my comfy bed and um, as you can see I am extremely uh, worn out. Um, I had a very long day but that's every day in uh, teaching in Korea. Um, it really is a full-time job but uh, it's very rewarding and I really love it. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to take some time to answer some of your questions that you sent me. Thank you so much for sending me questions. I will try and help you out and answer as best as I can while I munch on my favorite chips ever. My honey butter chips. If you ever come to Korea, try these. They're amazing. Before I go to dinner with my friend. So let's, uh, let's get you some knowledge. So Free and Jesus asked about things that I... I wish I had known uh, that I didn't have to bring or things I wouldn't have, shouldn't have brought or things that I didn't know that I couldn't get here and I wish I had brought. So the things that I didn't know that I couldn't get here are like general brand things, stuff that like you really aren't going to miss as much as you think you are. Um, like stuff that you can't really do anything about it. Like the biggest one for me is I am a Diet Coke addict. And uh, you can't really get Diet Coke here. You can in some restaurants, but for the most part, you can't really buy it here. You can buy regular Coke in abundance, and you can buy Coke Zero. But um, Diet Coke is not as big of a thing here. And it's, but my friend who works on the military base got me some for my birthday. And then um, others like deodorant brands, there's not as big of a selection here because Asians don't sweat as much as Westerners, but you can still find it anywhere, really. Things that I wish I hadn't brought, um, anything that's like tech, anything, like um, I brought my desktop computer and um, I wish that I hadn't brought my monitors because I can buy my monitors here. Uh, Seoul, Korea is such a technologically advanced country and city. It's really one of the most technologically advanced in the whole world and I didn't think about that at the time, but anything like anything that has to do with tech, literally anything, computer parts, monitors, um, any of that you can get uh, in stores or online for maybe even cheaper than in the US and it's just as well made. So definitely anything tech, don't bring it. Um, Air Um asked about how likely is it to be put in Seoul um, and can you, how long does it take to be transferred into Seoul from an outside province? So um, the thing, going back to what I was talking about, the difference between hagwons, private schools, and public schools, which is epic, is that hagwons, you have 100% control of where you want to be placed. You tell your recruiter, I want to be in this place, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, only send me schools that are hiring for Seoul, or Pusan, or um, uh, Jejudo, or something, and then you will only be contacted by schools that live there, or that are based there. But Epic, um, you can put in your application early enough and you might get lucky to be in Seoul, but really they'll put you wherever they want to put you. So if you absolutely want to have to need to be in Seoul, you'll have to go private route like I did because that's what I said. I had to be in Seoul, so here I am. Um, I heard, here's a question. I heard that South Korea is a very homogenized country and it's hard to make friends. Is that true? Um... To be honest, so, 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 so many Koreans want to learn English and they want to have foreign friends because they're in a very isolated country. You know, they're surrounded on all four sides by, or on three sides by water and then to the north of them is North Korea. 
and you know they kind of go to China and Japan but for the most part they want like foreign friends it's it's cool it's interesting it's different so you'll find a lot of people who are totally wanting to make friends with you and will go out of their way to make friends with you especially if they're trying to learn English and they'll want to kind of practice on you um, you'll definitely find people who are racist and who just don't like foreigners and don't like Westerners, don't like anybody that's not Korean, especially older people. And that can be a little hard to deal with, especially if you're coming from a country where you were never a minority like I did. Um, to be honest, one of the things that you kind of have to learn about when you come to Korea is that you will never be able to fully assimilate. Um, no matter how much you try because you're not Korean and if you don't look Korean and you're not Korean you will never be Korean um, they just will never you'll never be accepted as truly Korean you'll be accepted by people as like um, you live here now if, especially if you learn the language but you're always going to be a minority and at first like people looking at you and staring at you especially older people um, is kind of like ooh, like this attention but it gets very old very quickly like the first few weeks that you're here after that you're like I wish everyone would just stop staring at me and do they see all of the weird wrong things that I'm doing but um, no like you you will easily make friends here Korean friends especially young people you will easily make tons of young Korean fan friends but will you ever truly fit in no you will never truly fit in seamlessly do you need a bachelor's degree to teach in Korea in education? No, you don't need it in education, but it helps. It'll get you a job in a really good school, but all you need is you have to have a bachelor's. It doesn't matter what in. Um, which TEFL did I take? So I took the in-person course in Chicago. I was fortunate that I lived in Chicago at the time, and uh, I knew that I always did really bad with online courses when I was in college. So I decided to take the four-week in-person course and somehow I survived it. It was a lot of work, um, many sleepless nights, but totally worth it. All of my classmates are lifelong friends now and we all get to see what each other are up to in different corners of the world. Um, I know that when I interviewed at schools, one question that I did get often was, did you do online or in person? And I don't know if that means that like online is better or in person is better. It was something that they asked me, but they did ask me, did you do online or in person? But I did in person and I feel like I got so much good experience and learned so much good stuff from the in person as opposed to if I did it online, I would have not have done as well, I think. Really quickly, what was the interview and job process like? So is it easy to find a job? It depends if you're good at what you do, uh, if you're a personable person, if you're good with children, if that's where you're going to Korea, they look for kids, people who are good with children. Unless you're teaching adults, unless you find a job teaching adults, if you're good at teaching adults. If you're good at what you do, then you'll have no problem. Um, I found and signed my, I found a job and signed my contract the day, the last day of my TEFL certification. Um, ITA sent a letter to my employer saying that I was on track to graduate and to finish and so I signed my contract on the day of my graduation from TEFL. Um, the interview process for Korea, you interview um, over Skype remotely um, and that's how they do visa and stuff. So they will interview you over Skype and then they will hire you and then they'll do visa stuff abroad. So step one, you contact recruiters who are connected with the schools. Um, I went through Gone to Korea, which is really great. They were really great for me. I really enjoyed them. Gone number two, Korea.com. And um, then the recruiters will send out your applications and your cover letters to schools. The schools will express interest in you and then they'll set up an interview with you through your recruiter. It'll usually be at like nighttime, your time, and in, in Korea it's daytime there. And they will interview over Skype. It'll take like 20 minute interview, I think, like 20 minutes. You ask all your questions, they ask all their questions. And then if they liked you, they will give you a contract offer to sign and then if you sign it then you send them your documents for your visa application it takes a few weeks they'll get your visa sent to you you pick it up at your uh, Korean consulate and then a couple weeks later you're on your way to Korea so yeah do I get breaks 
Uh, between classes at my Hagwon. Yes, I do. So I don't go in until 11, so I get to kind of sleep in a little bit. And depending on if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, I either teach for two hours, have lunch, and then teach two classes, have a long break, like an hour and a half, hour and a 45 minute break, and then teach one last class. Or I teach for two hours for my kindy, and then have lunch, and then after that I teach four classes in a row, but they're like 35-40 minutes each, and so it's kind of like a marathon of classes then, but then I, I get off like an hour early and have like an hour to myself, so it's really not so bad. I'm actually like one of the world's like laziest people, to be honest, like, uh, it's kind of bad to admit, but I, I really am. So um, I am pretty lazy, but I feel like I get plenty of breaks, really. How long have I lived and taught in Seoul? Um, I've been in Seoul since February 2nd, and it's June 20-something. And so I've been here quite a little bit, um, been settling in very nicely. Did I teach anywhere before this? No. Um, Seoul, South Korea was where I wanted to be. Some teachers, they want to like um, travel around the world and they want to go see lots and lots of places, but me, I really just wanted to be in Korea. What was the deciding factor for Korea for me? Um, some people are like, I, I did it because it was the most money or like, uh, you know, it's a cool country, but really, I really love Korea. I've been studying Korean for about two years now. Uh, I still study Korean here in Korea and I've learned so much just living in the country where I'm studying the language. I love Korean language, I love Korean culture, I love Korean fashion, I love Korean music, uh, like K-indie or K-pop, like I love all of it. Um, I love like Korean cinema, I love Korean art, Korean history, so I really wanted to be in Korea because it was Korea. So I'm on my way now to meet my friend Mary, she's my fellow co-teacher, you guys saw her a little bit earlier, but we are going to have some samgyeopsal, and samgyeopsal is better known in the West by the name Korean barbecue, traditional Korean barbecue, so it'll be good. So I'm back um, from dinner with Mary and I'm going to touch on a couple more points really, 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 really quickly um, so I can get out of y'all's hair and uh, get to bed because I have a date tomorrow. Yay! So I'm going to talk about a couple things really quickly. So someone noticed that I have a lot of tattoos. Yes, I have a lot of tattoos. I even have hand tattoos, which is normally like very taboo anywhere in any country, but especially in Korea. I mentioned earlier in one of my stories that I lucked out with my hagwon. My hagwon is more lax about things as long as I kind of cover them up, or at least I make an effort to cover them up. If like they show a little bit, it's really not a big deal as long as I'm not like in anybody's face. But that's definitely not the prevailing theory in Korea. Most places you'll have to cover them up really, really really cover them. Um, so I've been to a few lesbian clubs since I've been here. One of my favorites is called, funnily enough, it's called the Pink Hole. Um, that's actually what it's called. And it's hidden, like, um, the only way that you know where it is, it's downstairs in a basement, is there's a set of stairs and there's a little tiny sign. It's a little pink sign and you know that that's it. And a lot of gay clubs here um, have rules that you can't f take photographs inside because people don't want photographs getting out of them being in gay clubs. Um, so that's like a huge rule. Um, and also, interestingly enough, in um, Korea, a lot of lesbian clubs absolutely flat out do not allow men in them. Uh, like sometimes they'll occasionally allow gay men, but for the most part, men are not allowed. And then for like gay clubs, gay male clubs, women are allowed, but their cover fee is significantly higher. Um, so it's interesting because that doesn't really happen in the US. They get in trouble if like they just said like no men allowed, right? But so I got asked if I could show my apartment. So be warned, my apartment is tiny. It's a tiny little studio in Seoul. I need to do laundry really bad. That's my makeup corners, my sink, refrigerator, bathroom, closets, some K-pop stuff I need to ship to friends. Um, this 
little tiny studio. My washing machine is out there as well as my terrace. This costs maybe about seven, eight hundred a month USD. Um, lots of boxes because I've been sending some stuff, but yeah. So general cost of living here. Um, if it's something that's imported, it's kind of expensive. But if it's something that's made in Korea, because Korea is li like literally only the size of like Indiana, like if it was made in Korea, it's really cheap. So. Finally, the biggest question that I've gotten, the one I've gotten the most from people, um, I've been getting bombarded with this question from you guys, from my family, from my friends, am I afraid of North Korea? Uh, short answer, no. Long answer, no. <laughs> there's nothing to be afraid of, <laughs> no. Um, believe me, if there's anybody who's a big fraidy cat, it's me, and I'm not afraid, so no, absolutely not. Nothing so I'm back in bed. So it is almost midnight here, and usually in Korea on weekends, I stay out until the wee hours of the morning partying because that's what you do in Seoul. Uh, Seoul is a party city, but I do have a date tomorrow, so I am going to head off to bed early. However, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know like I talked a lot, but there is still so, 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 so much that I didn't cover because I just didn't have time um, or, you know, like I I couldn't take up the whole day, but if you ever have any questions, just message me on my uh, handle. I will be glad to answer any questions in depth that you guys have. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that I can do this again sometime, maybe with a, even a little bit more experience to tell you guys about. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to message me, and I will see you guys soon. Come to Korea. It's great. I love Korea. I'd highly recommend it.